little kids house. It's been a long time since we've been together. This is Teacher Nate. Wanted to uh, spend some time with you. Surely do miss being with you guys at the at Sunday school, uh, but happy that I can share with this time with you right now. Uh, hopefully you guys are sheltering safe at home with your family and that all are well and healthy. Uh, and so hopefully soon we'll be able to hang out together and uh, have more fun together as well. Today we're going to be sharing uh, with you about the word justice. And I have a video to share. And so it's a video from the Bible Project. Uh, they have a video about justice. And so I think it would be a good video to, uh, to share with you guys and learn about some words, especially around justice. One of the words that we actually are going to, two words we're going to learn today is the word for justice, two, two new Hebrew words, one for justice and the other one for righteous. And uh, those two words seem to go hand in hand a lot of times when they're used in, throughout the Bible, especially when it's God or a, a prophet of God sharing a word. So uh, we'll share that word with you right now. Uh, the two words, one is mishpat, which is the word for, for justice. Um, mishpat. Sounds like you're saying uh, pot at the end, like a pot, a pot or a pan. Um, but mishpat, that'd be a good word for justice. And then for righteous, the word is sadek, or sometimes you might hear the word sadiq. Uh, sadek or sadiq. Uh, sadeka is the word for righteous. And you can see how God is using it. So I think the video does a good job of explaining that. One of the things I want to do as we go back to the video, there's going to be some questions at the end or a takeaway at the end that we want to make sure you learn one thing from that video that you can take away. From the smaller kids, you might share one, uh, you might draw some things that make you, that you remember from the video. And the other ones, you might write them, write down notes that you want to keep in mind. So no, no further ado, we'll go right into the video and talk about the video and so the video again is from the bible project it is called uh just about justice and the video is starting now if you were a praying mantis it would be socially acceptable to devour your mates. And if you're a honey badger, you have no regard for other animals. You don't care. If you're a panda with twins, it's normal to abandon one to take care of the other. But if humans do any of these things, we would call it wrong, unfair, or unjust. Yeah, why is that? Why do humans care so much about justice? Well, the Bible has a fascinating response to that question. On page one, humans are set apart from all other creatures as the image of God. Yeah, God's representatives who rule the world by his definition of good and evil. And this identity, it's the bedrock of the Bible's view of justice. All humans are equal before God and have the right to be treated with dignity and fairness no matter who you are. And that would be nice if we all did that. But we know how the world really works. And the Bible addresses that too. It shows how we are constantly redefining good and evil to our own advantage at the expense of others. Yeah, self-preservation. And the weaker someone is, the easier it is to take advantage of them. And so in the biblical story, we see this happening on a personal level, but also in families, and then in communities, and in whole civilizations that create injustice, especially towards the vulnerable. But the story doesn't end there. Out of this whole mess, God chose a man named Abraham to start a new kind of family. Specifically, Abraham was to teach his family to keep the way of the Lord by doing righteousness and justice. Yeah, doing righteousness, that's a Bible word I don't really use, but what comes to mind is being a good person. But what does that even mean, being good? The biblical Hebrew word for righteousness is tzedakah, and it's more specific. It's an ethical standard that refers to right relationships between people. It's about treating others as the image of God. With the God-given dignity they deserve. And this word justice, it's the Hebrew word mishpat. It can refer to retributive justice. Like if I steal something, I pay the consequences. Exactly. Yet most often in the Bible, mishpat refers to restorative justice. It means going a step further, actually seeking out vulnerable people who are being taken advantage of and helping them. 
Yeah, some people call this charity. But mishpat involves way more. It means taking steps to advocate for the vulnerable and changing social structures to prevent injustice. So justice and righteousness are about a radical, selfless way of life. Yeah, and you find this idea all over the Bible. Like here, in the book of Proverbs, what does it mean to bring about just righteousness? Open your mouth for those who can't speak for themselves. And what do these words mean for the prophets, like Jeremiah? Rescue the disadvantaged, and don't tolerate oppression or violence against the immigrant, the orphan, and the widow. And like here, look in the book of Psalms. The Lord God upholds justice for the oppressed, gives food to the hungry, and sets the prisoner free. But he thwarts the way of the wicked. Whoa, he thwarts the wicked? Yeah, in Hebrew, the word wicked is rasha. It means guilty or in the wrong. It refers to someone who mistreats another human, ignoring their dignity as an image of God. So justice and righteousness is a big deal to God. Yes, it's what Abraham's family, the Israelites, were to be all about. They ended up as immigrant slaves, being oppressed unjustly in Egypt. And so God confronted Egypt's evil, declaring them to be rasha, guilty of injustice. And so he rescued Israel. But the tragic irony of the Old Testament story is that these redeemed people went on to commit the same acts of injustice against the vulnerable. And so God sent prophets who declared Israel guilty. But they weren't the only ones. There's injustice everywhere. Yeah, some people actively perpetrate injustice. Others receive benefits or privileges from unjust social structures they take for granted. And sadly, history has shown that when the oppressed gain power, they often become oppressors themselves. So we all participate in injustice, actively or passively, even unintentionally. We're all the guilty ones. And so this is the surprising message of the biblical story. God's response to humanity's legacy of injustice is to give us a gift, the life of Jesus. He did righteousness and justice, and yet he died on behalf of the guilty. But then God declared Jesus to be the righteous one when he rose from the dead. And so now Jesus offers his life to the guilty so that they too can be declared righteous before God, not because of anything they've done, but because of what Jesus did for them. The earliest followers of Jesus experienced this righteousness from God, not just as a new status, but as a power that changed their lives and compelled them to act in surprising new ways. Yeah, if God declared someone righteous when they didn't deserve it, the only reasonable response is to go and seek righteousness and justice for others. This is a radical way of life, and it's not always convenient or easy. It's courageously making other people's problems my problems. This is what Jesus meant by loving your neighbor as yourself. It's about a lifetime commitment fueled by the words of the ancient prophet Micah. God has told you, humans, what is good and what the Lord requires of you is to do justice, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with your God. So, we got a new visitor. This is Raven. This is our dog. Um, now that you've watched the video, take some time, think about the video again and what you saw, and then share one thing uh, with a family member uh, about what you learned from the video. Think about what it said, what it meant to you, and things of that nature. Or you can write down notes to yourself or draw a picture or image that shows God's justice, how he intended it to be, uh, and what Jesus showed it as well. Take some time, spend some time with that. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you enjoyed this time. Miss you guys. Hope to be with you soon. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.